I just don't think people have a big enough imagination for this upcoming cycle and what's going on. And I think we're entering the last chapter of this macroeconomic system. I'm quoted saying 250,000 to a million. That's my range. And the range is wide, but the I'm, you're asking me to price something in a piece of paper that politicians, as you pointed out, that don't even know how the system works are actively debasing. So, you know, I, th I think it trivially gets 250,000. I think a million is possible within the next 18 months. I think a million is is reasonable. I mean, given the amount of debasing that they're going to have to do to hold the system up and bail out the bond market. Strike CEO Jack Mallers, one of the youngest visionaries in the Bitcoin space, has a staggering $250,000 to $1 million price prediction for the world's largest cryptocurrency by market cap before the bull market ends in 2025. During a recent discussion with Daniela Cambone on the ITM Trading YouTube channel, Mahler said he believes Bitcoin prices could get as high as $1 million per coin when central banks begin the next round of money printing and quantitative easing measures. Mahler warns that a severe crisis is brewing in the bond market, and the Fed will be forced to step in to stop an implosion that could pull down the entire financial system. He cites the example of embattled currencies like the Argentine peso, Egyptian pound, Nigerian nira, and the Japanese yen which has lost more than one-third of its value in the past three years. Jack previously revealed that he believes the next QE rounds could be thrice as large as those printed during the pandemic, which was approaching $13 trillion as of mid-2021, according to an article from Nasdaq.com. Comparatively, this cost more than the US spent in its 13 most expensive wars combined. The $5.2 trillion spent on personal relief checks, vaccines, unemployment, and other purposes is larger than the estimated $4.7 trillion spent on World War II in today's dollars. If Jack's prediction is right and the Fed and other central banks unleash an even larger round of money printing on the global economy, asset prices will skyrocket wildly and fiat currencies will lose even more value. This is probably why Jack proudly announced earlier this year that he was going all in on Bitcoin and completely away from the US dollar and other fiat currencies. While the latter has lost more than 90% of its value in the past 100 years, Bitcoin has increased by thousands of folds and remains the world's best performing asset since it was created. We will now bring you clips from Jack's insightful discussion with Cambone. Please watch, share, and like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Everything you do helps with the YouTube algorithm and immensely contributes to the channel's growth. Thanks and enjoy the video. I think right now we're in this really weird environment where we've had rates that were raised faster than they've ever been raised before and they've persisted. And now we have this Fed that's trying to scare markets and claim higher for longer, where in reality, I don't think it actually matters. Um, it's clearly inflationary, whether you're looking at the stock market, gold, the real estate index, Bitcoin, everything is double digit year over year returns. And so it's clearly stimulative still. It's clearly inflationary still. I think people can get confused by the price of money, which is interest rates. Um, but what about the supply of money? Um, they're still stimulating. They're still printing dollars. And so I actually don't think it matters what the Fed does. Um, it's all stimulative. And the reality is my favorite metric is global debt to GDP because it really, to me, it just tells the story very cleanly is that I view money as our time and energy in an abstracted form, our time and energy in a market good that we can either save or exchange. And so what global debt to GDP tells me is that governments around the world have bo borrowed a tremendous amount of our time and energy from our future with no growth to pay it back. That loss has to be realized somewhere. Okay, so where's that loss going to be realized? They have two options. Either the people that lent them the time and energy or the money uh, aren't going to get it back. And those are who? The bondholders. Those are all of the banks, all of the wealth in the world. Or they're going to debase the currency of the general populace and take time and energy from them. And that's what we call inflation. So to me, it doesn't really matter what the Fed does. Higher for longer, we're going to cut. It's all loaded nonsense. It's all very distracting. It's that there has to, there's a loss that has to be realized somewhere. And it's either going to be all the banks have to collapse and the bond market and the so uh, sovereign debt market is going to go to zero. 
or they're going to debase the currency and inflate their way out, which is just ways of abstracting time and energy away from the populace to make themselves whole on what has been an egregious mistake in government and in fiat currency. Which of the two do you think is more of the likely scenario? You tell me. I mean, come on. If they wanted to... It, listen, if I became the dictator of America where I can make mm -hmm. any decision I wanted to do, what I would do is have the banks fail. I, I mean, we're running 2008 back. I would... I, I mean, if they wanted to let the banks fail, they could have. I think de-dollarization started in 08, 09 because right. the world realized... They're not, they don't care about the value of this world reserve currency. They don't care about protecting the shareholders of this dollar network. Uh, and they bailed those guys out. And that's, that's the only way. And the, the reality is there's no easy way out. The other way is you need to debase the time and energy of the, everyone that commutes to work every single day. So think about it. I mean, why are people getting married later in life? Why are people having less kids? Why are people having less housing? Because it's more time and energy that goes into a quality of life that we expect. Because they're debasing our money, they're debasing the time and energy that we're contributing into the universe to make themselves whole on, on the whole in, in the balance sheet, right? On the global debt to GDP ratio. So I think they're gonna debase the currency, which by the way, where we agree, Bitcoin, gold, these are both assets that are outside the purview. Um, of their reach, right? They cannot debase these. And so it is a way to protect your time and energy, uh, in my opinion, and, and why these assets probably perform very well. Jack's animosity towards the US Federal Reserve and other central banks is completely understandable and deserved. Macroanalysts and economists have repeatedly pointed out the stark difference between the dollar's performance and value before the bank was created and after it was created in 1913. This also provides a lot of insight into why most of the Founding Fathers were against the idea of an all-powerful central authority that would determine the value Americans get for the money. Thomas Jefferson said he considered central banking to be a bigger threat to liberty than standing armies. George Washington said, paper money ruins commerce and results in oppression and every species of fraud and injustice. For John Adams, paper money is the cause of all the perplexities, confusion, and distress in America. Unfortunately, those in charge of our financial systems and economic policies now are people like Jared Bernstein, the chair of the United States Council of Economic Advisors, who recently said the U.S. government can't go bankrupt because we can print our own money. Not only did Bernstein, who drives economic policies in the country, reveal that the U.S. government can and does create money out of thin air, something they've denied for years, but his blatant refusal to acknowledge there is something wrong with our economic policies is the exact reason why we are here today. The way Bernstein stumbles through the next question about why we have to borrow when we can just print all we need is another huge indication of looming disaster. Let's get back to the video. I think this is a, a perfect example of why money that we use within society, so again, Money solved this idea of barter so we can hyper fixate and focus on our jobs and we don't have to exchange them for someone else's job. We can exchange them for money and then use them in an economy. That's what allowed us to have billions of people in the economy, digitize the economy, have an economy on the internet. And what we exchange our time and energy for cannot be centrally controlled by a group, um, especially government and politicians, because it will just be abused. And so that's what I think we've seen is just compounded abuse over decades and decades and decades to people that supposedly make decisions, don't even know how it works. So uh, to me, it was just a clear as day example. And I mean, even right in there, right? I, I think he's right, by the way. The US government can't default. I think that's true. And that's the position they've always taken. So they will print, which is another way of saying they will inflate, they will debase. Right. So they will take the time and energy of the general populace that has to go to work. Everyone that has to go to work every day will get less housing, less groceries, less gas, less cars, less family, less lot, less life expectancy uh, in order to finance what they're doing. Right. And the only other way is for, is for them to let the bond market collapse and for us to reset the whole thing. So he's right, um, whether he knows it or not. Uh, he's unfortunately looks clueless and uneducated, though, but I don't know. How if either of us are surprised by that. I just don't think people have a big enough imagination for this upcoming cycle and what's going on. And I think we're entering the last chapter of this macroeconomic 
system of sorts. Really, this is post World War II. I mean, you have this American hegemony that we've, I'm, I'm American, that we have been trying to protect and persist for a long time. And I think we're seeing potentially the, the, the final ends of that. I mean, let's look at now there's a dollar yen, there's the, a swap line with Japan that we just opened, right? I mean, we're, we've seen currency crises in Nigeria and in Turkey. Now we're seeing one in Japan. Soon China's going to have to devalue. And so my simple math and logic is, again, like there's a, a loss that has to be realized. Do I think that the United States of America is going to default and have JP Morgan and all of their financial institutions and banking underbelly collapse? We're seeing what that looks like in Argentina, by the way. It's not easy. I don't think any politician is, I don't think Trump or Biden or RFK is going to get up and say, I'm going to take away your health care. I'm going to take, I'm going to inflate everything around you. I'm going to crash everything you know. All your bank deposits are gone. We're going to go through the Great Depression because it's in the best interest of America. That's not what politicians do, right? I think politicians are going to say, here's a bunch of free shit, and this is why you should elect me. And they're going to have to fill the hole of this deficit. And that, I think it's not impossible to think. I'm quoted saying 250,000 to a million. That's my range. And the range is wide, but the I'm, you're asking me to price something in a piece of paper that politicians, as you pointed out, that don't even know how the system works, are actively debasing. So, you know, I th I think it trivially gets two hundred fifty thousand. I think a million is possible within the next eighteen months for that for that reason. Um, I mean, even what's happening right now in Japan is terrifying. Uh, I, I, they're they're literally testing a swap line to protect the Japanese currency. Uh, the Japanese currency is getting so weak, China is going to have to devalue soon, probably. So I I think a million is is reasonable. I mean, given the amount of debasing that they're going to have to do to hold the system up and bail out the bond market. At the beginning of the year, Jack Maller announced in a post on X that he no longer owned US dollars and was all in on Bitcoin. In a thread that now has almost a million views and over 12,000 likes, Jack noted that there was no sense in owning any dollars because of the rapid debasement caused by excessive money printing and overspending. Here are some of the tweets from the thread. I no longer own any US dollars. Not even a penny. As an American millennial, I love our country, but I oppose our money. I'm all in on Bitcoin, setting my sails toward prosperity or going down with the ship. I believe it's important to take a stance now more than ever. During the discussion with Cambone, Mahlers emphasizes that he still strongly believes in the American dream and the ideals on which the country was built. However, he believes the nation has lost its way completely, and we won't get back on track until the corrupt financial system that steals from the poor to further enrich the wealthy collapses. Fortunately, the strike CEO believes the eventual unraveling of the system is much closer than everyone believes. What are your thoughts on Jack's $1 million Bitcoin price prediction and his decision to exit the US dollar completely? Please share your thoughts, comments, and observations in the comments section below. Also, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notifications bell so you never miss any of our videos featuring insightful analysis and interviews from the industry's brightest minds. Thanks for watching.